And we're back on Iron Dependency. I am Pedro Barry Agard and just continuing our discussion on law and authority, we actually just ended that in the last session. So within this segment, we'd like to focus on drug abuse in Trinidad and Tobago. In particular, the youths, you know, children under the age of 18 and why we do it, why we do it, you know, how is it done? <laughs> You know, just basically things like that. In particular, I would like to talk about alcohol consumption. Now, I mean, alcohol is a widely used drug and it causes the most addiction and violence. And you wonder to yourself, okay, so why do the youths drink alcohol? Why do we indulge in it? Is it because we see our friends doing it? Is it because we want to do it? Some people probably just don't have their head on and they just say, well, whatever. A lot of youth, sometimes you'd find them saying, I need a break, yes, I need a drink. Mostly when they're stressed. Why is it that we resort to alcohol? Why we can't say, Lem, you know, why we can't say, <laughs> let me go on the beach or let me go and take a little lime somewhere. Why is it that we need alcohol to have fun? I mean, I'm going to raise this point because I find it you know very confusing why would adults say these youths always want to drink they're always drunk they park up park up meaning well for those who don't know <laughs> you're on the side of a road basically <laughs> unconscious the majority of times and you know you, you just basically you're unaware of everything that's going on around you we as the youths we say you park up right <laughs> okay so um just continuing <laughs> yeah gather all the way sorry so, could pause Park that up. What is that? No, 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 no. Park up. Park, park, park up. Park up. Yeah. Like, Meaning, like you're 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 it come like this, right? You have your car and you're driving your car all the time, mm. and then something happened to cause you to park your car, right? And stop. Yeah. You just the same way that, that you stop up. when you're intoxicated and you're drunk and you're like, not gonna be drunk and vomiting on yourself. Yeah. Cool. You okay. Carry up. on. Right. So, um, I have this major, major issue when I hear adults. In extension, parents say, I don't understand why my child have to drink so much and why this and why that and why everything is a bar and this. Answer me this question. This I'm, ref I'm actually referring this question to the parents and the adults out there. Do you allow your children to drink at Christmas time? You allow them to drink punch cream? You allow them to drink shandy? Do you allow them to take, okay, daddy, mix a little scotch, let me take a little taste now, daddy. Daddy, let me get a taste of the beer now. You allow your children to drink at Christmas time but when carnival time come around or when any other social event they attend to come around you wonder why it is they're drinking well guess what they drank at home they saw it as a normal thing their parents allowed it so why not go out there and continue indulging in alcohol I mean at the end of the day you cannot blame the children for wanting to drink alcohol if it is they consume the alcohol at home and I find it I mean, it's a very hypocritic way of thinking for you to say, you know, at, okay, well, you could drink Christmas time, but you can't drink at parties. That is utter nonsense. That is utter nonsense. Either you say, yeah, you could drink or nay, you cannot drink. How mm -hmm. dare can you tell? I mean, that is confusing for a child growing up in society. Your parents say Christmas time, what? You get into drink your life away. Everything, punch a creme pass and anything. But as you go a party, your parents just like, don't drink tonight, eh? no bears, no this, no that. Why? I would really like to get an answer as to why does that happen. Peach, and I mean, why yeah. Why do you think young people should not drink? What, are they, what do you understand as to why they shouldn't drink? This is not, to be very honest, it's not only young people. I am talking about, I have seen, okay, I have seen young people <laughs> indulge in alcohol. And as we say, park up. They park up real bad. Right because because they indulge in the alcohol over the limit that i mean over the age of 18 yes you know you're allowed to drink we have some responsible people they drink that's a social event they don't get drunk you know they, okay <coughs> fine whatever it's to get a, a head or to get a nice feeling they do that they go home merry happy everybody cool we have some of them probably under the age of 18 indulge in it park up have no way of getting home mm -hmm end up in some stranger's car mm. and then mm. dot 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 story to be continued well obviously 
as a youth you should know your limits with anything in anything in life and i mean alcohol is a, a major concern within society because it's so easily accessible to us like to be very honest you could walk in a grocery and you could probably have a smirn off in your hand you walk up to the cashier cashier probably bat tire lashes twice probably thinking i ain't feeling to hear no old talk from this youth to lie and tell me something so she just sell it and we call that george so, so, so what you say sorry Natasha. no i just wanted to stick or go back to that point i i raise it for, for a specific reason because of the fact that um alcohol is not sold to minors because alcohol affects the body differently a, ch- a child's a body child's and a br- yeah. and brain differently than an adult. So there's a biological and scientific reason why young people should not drink. And I, I don't know that a lot of young people know that, which is why I raise the point. Nope. But carry on. Go ahead. Be- no, I um because y- have you ever seen ad- alcohol advertised on television? Yes, and we tend to see the ads, you know, very um mm-hmm. what's the word seductive, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have the woman probably dressed well i don't even if to call it dress but skin. they have on some sort yeah. of cloth on their skin and you know <laughs> in a very seductive manner you'll find the poses or the songs that they they have with the um the advertisements you know they tend to be very what's the word persuasive and you know they make you want to indulge in it they come to the smooth voice woman yes <laughs> exactly a very Drink. you know <laughs> And I mean, indulge. <laughs> why do we have to go so far to sell alcohol? I mean, as far as I see it, adults don't even know their limits. Because I have seen some adults end up drunk, probably passed out, who get in vex. You'll see them in some parties or, you know, in especially carnival fets. And you will see them pelting bottles and things. And you're wondering to yourself, um, how old are you? You Stop acting your shoe size. I mean, come on. <laughs> You're a big hardback man or woman. Why it is you have, you know, us looking at you like that. I mean, okay, so I attend um pan semis, right? Mm-hmm. I was on the greens, you know, with our friends, whatever. On the greens, well, I'm not sure. The majority of you all know how it's set up this year. You know, you have your different, different tents mass, or whatever. Yeah. And then everybody basically, it's an all-inclusive kind of feel. Now, I mean, I don't drink, so I didn't bother to buy a ban, right? Because I, I don't indulge in alcohol. I mean, for my personal reasons, I don't indulge in it, right? I have seen adults at the Greens in a state where you wonder to yourself, I mean, uh, do you even know what your name is? You know, are, are you aware of what you're doing? Like, why it is you, you make it necessary to indulge in alcohol and then can't handle yourself? I have no problem with you indulging in alcohol once you're an adult. Just ensure that at the end of the day, your character is kept. I mean, that's all you have at the end of the day, your dignity. How, how easy accessible is alcohol and other drugs? Uh, alcohol and other drugs available to young people? Because we, 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 and I want you to tell us about that. Because, you know, we say it here all the time and I think people think we tend to dramatize or we, <laughs> they, they feel we're dramatizing. But for the sake of those listening, how easy is it for young folks to access drugs and alcohol well um i I think i should be the easiest one to answer that because (laughs) i have knowledge of this um right now in certain institutions educational institutions that is is really a matter of you just have to know who to talk to because Mm -hmm. remember as i said earlier children coming from gangs at home so when they leave their community it's really as simple to say okay what school you're going to where are you all right and this is gang leader talking to the Mm -hmm. child he said all right well take this sell this and from the time he goes in school and he says, all right, guys, I had this. Everybody who's already at that stage in their life where they want to experiment, they will just say, okay, mm-hmm. well, how much should this be? Well, let me get some now. Nah. And you know, they, they're, trying to, they're trying to, it's really just a matter of sometimes when people experiment, they experiment without self-control. Mm-hmm. And self-control, I think, is really the major factor in the whole alcohol discussion because I've I been drinking. <laughs> I, <laughs> when I was so younger, I used to drink a lot. And it really just, it wasn't a matter of my parents. I don't even know if my parents used to know, but if I wanted to get alcohol, I'll get it. Mm, exactly. So, yeah. well, and even. Hmm? Well, they know now. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, psh, they knew. They I knew. told <laughs> <them>. <laughs> <It's>, Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I have none time for my parents. <laughs> I let them all know because what happened to, as, okay, when we were younger, younger meaning 16, 17, not legal adults. No, I am. Anyway, 
Yeah. Maybe we with legal adults, there was always this factor of us personally being a little bit scared to actually go and buy the alcohol, right? Mm, yeah. But yeah. how about this? Everybody's genetics different. So, you know, we have some friends with more hair on their face than others. <laughs> it's a deeper voice. So, they go up to the counter and the lady at the cash register don't even think twice to ask for ID. They just say, all right, go ahead. And I realize at that point in time, nobody really cares. The, the society itself is permissive to that. They are allowing it. So, if they are allowing it, why should we feel how to engage? So, 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 Pete, so what you're saying now is um, you could actually go in a bar then and buy of a beer. Of course, yeah. you could go in a bar. It's it's been the done. bar is better. Why go to the grocery store? That's too much stress. The bar is better. The reason you go to the grocery is because it's cheaper. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, sometimes the bar is ID yeah. again. Yeah, yeah the bar is ID again. Sometimes you the bar is ID again. Never. No, I mean, I mean, the been times, the been times, look, we go into a party and it's, it's, so, it's, it's a sad thing, really. You're going to a party. The party is advertised for 18 years and over. It's mm-hmm. a cooler party, right? So that means you bring your own drinks. We go to the grocery. None of us 18 yet. We go to the grocery. We buy our drinks. We set up. We pack up the cooler. We go down to We go down to the venue. We walk inside. Nobody asks us why to reach inside either. Mm-hmm. And then we reach inside. You have a ball. Now, to be honest, it's been only like, okay, three, four occasions where I know where my friends got totally drunk, completely had no self-control, right? And even in that situation, the rest of us, it's just a matter of the people around you. Because yeah. I see, because yeah, I remember when true. we were in Pan Page, they had a man who was sitting down on the cooler With the in the white vest. Yeah, and ketchup. Yeah. And he was gone. And he did not know his name. I was like, pal, what's your name? He was like, eh, eh, eh. talking like if he was a crack cookie in his whole life. Something, and he had no, no lips. And when you realize yourself that it are people I know who've been drinking, I mean, okay. The people, the older people, let me talk like my grandfather, this eight years old around there, they've been drinking their whole lives. And for them, it never actually became an issue. Because it, it was like my mom told me when she was younger, her parents were drinkers. So her father would fill up one fridge outside with beers for the weekend. And then inside, they have that mini bar. Because I remember back in the old time, you can't fence them because I know I'm talking the truth. Back in the old time, everybody had a little small bar in the house. Well, you know, the parents had a whiskey, the mm-hmm. rum, all yeah, the traditional yeah. <laughs> liquor cabinet, of yeah. course. One but have you ever, <laughs> <One paragraph. laughs> has anybody ever here been asked for ID when purchasing alcohol? Yes, yeah. and it's very embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Who asked you for ID? Tell us about Let's that. Just tell us about that because I want to compliment them. Who? <laughs> <laughs> no, serious. Which establishment? I remember one time, oh God, <laughs> stumbling. Five dollar rum on what was it a Thursday night? Probably yeah. In Thursday summer. night. The thing is, is a group of about five of us, and about three of us were actually eighteen, and two of us weren't. Yeah. And um, we <laughs> we went up to the bouncer, like just expecting to be nonchalant and just walk in, and big man hold us up, and because it's five dollar rums, well, everybody was there. Yep. I was so embarrassed because he told us, well, if none of us, if not all of us, eight, over eighteen, then we can't come in. So. Yeah, hello. Where was this? Shakers. 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 Yeah. Congratulations. Come, let's give them a round of applause. No, no, that's that's yeah, that's great. That's great different. because we have not yes. well done, Shakers. Yeah. No, because they have some that really do. They are seasoned. Is it yeah. consistent though? Um, it depends. Like sometimes if it's a slow night, like if the bar empty, then they'll just let. Mm, it they don't be. really care. Yeah. They they have no seals. But some trying to get. some established ones are. Mm. Strict so please very just very wrap strict. this up and before we take some calls mm-hmm. so what you're saying about drugs alcohol and other drugs are easy accessible to young yes. people yeah. and I what mean, advice i didn't get to you know i didn't get to touch on the whole marijuana go yeah. ahead go it's ahead. you now i mean that honestly speaking is a everyday activity for a lot of youths not yeah. only youths but i mean adults right i mean I am not going to lie to tell you. I remember specifically a day coming out of St. Anne's. My windows were down. And I mean, I'm getting this scent. I was like, I'm smelling funny boy. Turned to mommy. I was like, mommy, that, that's, yeah. And she was like, yeah. So it clearly means somebody in their car, on their way to work, school, or wherever they're going, bus again down in the splint. And I'm just like, she what? Said splint. <laughs> she said splint. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I was, yeah, just making sure that you all you know understood where I was coming from. I was making sure you're all on top of your game. Very yeah, good show now. Good, good. So I mean, I'm there like, what, what, what's going on? And I mean, Wait. I remember too. In some parties, you'll go, 
and you get a scent in between the party and I mean you're seeing police officers in the party. I say like okay, is it the police? I don't know, they have no no nose. I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure what it is because we will do it anywhere. Any anywhere. And I mean it's very easily accessible because How as Shay said, we have pushers in the schools. So we so, so it's confirmed that I mean you are going to school. Yeah. So you all understand that they, they, I, I mean, we've been saying it for quite a while and we got admonished for saying it but what advice then I mean you hear the Minister of National Security even the Minister of Education and everybody trying to figure out how to deal with this problem mm-hmm. how are we to deal with this how, how, how are we to stop children from bringing marijuana in school to sell you need to first find out where the children are getting drugs. the marijuana from is it, that they're gr- is it that it's growing in their backyards so I mean, yes. I've heard about yeah. some secondary schools within the Port of Spain environs. They grow their marijuana on school grounds. On school grounds. Yeah. I'm not going to call the name, obviously. Right, but I yeah. mean, something as simple as that. And I mean, if I am not even attending the school and I'm aware of this, it I don't know. I For some reason, I would think that the teachers or the principal in the school, you know, should know about it. And my advice to, you know, the youth out there, I mean, okay. I understand we're growing up. We want to experience certain things. We want to, you know, find yourself. You know, you're at this time in your life where you're basically finding your identity. But, I mean, how far do you really go to find that identity? Do you really need to indulge in something that, you know, it's not beneficial to you, nor is it beneficial to your peers or, in extension, you know, your family? Six two two four nine one one. Six two two four nine one one. I hope some of your friends could call and, and explain to us you know how they feel about what they just heard and 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 i mean it's i mean so many things i've 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 heard today i've heard for the first time like having two sets of uniform a shirt skirt and a long skirt and you're i'm sure even the teachers are aware of that to their parents but let's take our first call six two two four nine one one good 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 evening hi good evening um good evening to mr gas and say a guest in the studio Good evening. Good evening. Um, this is gentleman when you're trying to get in contact with Sarge. Pardon? Mr. Sinclair. Uh huh. When you're trying to get in contact with Sarge before he passed away. Yes. I'm going to relate to the information to you. Right. right um, I'm a parent. I'm a teenager. Based on the school uniform thing, one, we have school children still doing it. Still going to school with tennis for pants. Young ladies still wear shorts here. Some parents don't. Check on the children before they leave. Some parents leave home before, so they're not seeing what the children wearing. Where the marijuana thing is concerned, there are some parents who sell it and encourage the children on it, right? So you had to go home. Where the alcohol is concerned, I used to work in an establishment where my function was to ID the children. I hijacked somebody and, I, and my boss told me, allow the person. And the person was 16. Lo and behold, the person got intoxicated. Somebody dropped them. And I got sent home for that. So, what? Yeah, I got some free. I got some free. free. It was <coughs> a popular establishment, but my function was I when I I because no tell me no leave the child don't go the world because it was who is who China. Mm-hmm. Apart from that, okay. Yeah. I want okay. to compliment the youth here, to the younger minister and Clay. What I would like you to do is to take them into the different schools, take them into the different schools. Because this conversation here, a lot of people have not put in the children to sit down and listen. And that is what needs to happen. Parents need to play a more active role. I'm not blaming all parents, but some parents need to play a more active role. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Thanks a lot. Thank you. 6224911, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. evening. Yeah, hi to everybody. Um, First of all, going back to the policeman Mm -hmm. and what Paige did. Wow, that story is so unbelievable, but I believe her. But I was hoping my granddaughter wasn't listening, because mm-hmm. she's the type just like her. That she might have say, you are very disrespectful, you know. And you know, of course, my days was different, but I went to a school. Would you all believe that I never saw a fight in that school? Wow. Because we got lectures all the time, an all-girls school. So you're talking to a lady here. We yeah. got lectures and it wasn't allowed. It just wasn't thought of. I never 
saw a fight every Monday was a lecture because it wasn't allowed and I think people should have their training from home would you believe these pre some of these press these schools too mm -hmm. I know of one particular some brothers that two of them got hooked on cocaine going to that college right and it's a college more in the west mm -hmm. and you're talking about topper topper <laughs> so you, so you, you have to hold your children home and educate them educate them as much as possible I used to believe in corporal punishment but I have seen my granddaughter going to a beautiful young lady she's now 16 and I think she ever gets fixed you know but she's obedient she talks it out with her mom and I find that to be amazing so it does work Thank you. A little, a little spank now and then. Hey, man. Thanks, Thanks Carl, right. very much. Thank you. Um, six two two four nine one one is the number to call. And please, um, we we would like to hear from young people. If you're under the age of twenty five, we would love to hear your opinion on what you heard this afternoon from Paige and Shay and Shona on the topic of law and authority. Good afternoon. All right, we lost that one. Six two two four nine one one. Good afternoon. <laughs> you're first to out. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't All right, thank you very All much. All right, thanks, eh? <laughs> I don't know why. Six two two four nine one one. The line is open to young people. <laughs> young people, twenty five and under. Mm -hmm. Please. Yeah, the, the, uh, my friends call. Good afternoon. Hello. 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 Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Yeah, man. I am sixty five years old. It's okay. Uh, that, that's okay. Right. <laughs> I'm listening. Since I'm seventeen years old, I'm smoking my one. Right. <laughs> Right. I'm 65 years old. I'm still smoking marijuana. Mm-hmm. Marijuana is peaceful, the soul. And God of himself put marijuana on the earth. If they have no plant on earth that was put anybody else but God. All right. But God put marijuana on earth, right? Okay, and, and I understand that. Marijuana. So it's just cool not to cut you. And comfortable. Don't I completely you know, understand. You want, you want to kill, you want to kill somebody. They just smoke a marijuana and like, they don't cool and quiet. And comfortable. God put marijuana out for people to smoke to be cool and quiet. So Very you good. advocate marijuana use for persons under the age of eighteen, such as those in the studio right now? Yes. Do you think young people should be smoking marijuana since it it extols all the virtues that you go for the you can smoke it? And it will be very good for Thank you. Thank you very food. much for your you'll opinion, sir. It was great when you drink from you'll kill people. Thank you. Thank you. Six two two four nine one one. Good afternoon. Good evening. Sorry. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening to Paige. Good evening to Shin and I. Good evening. Um, I myself am one of the pairs. Thank so you very much. I good wanted to, Yes, I um, I wanted to speak about, you know, the desensitization of alcohol in society, and we see this um, especially prevalent in our soca song. So this is one of the matters that I wanted to bring up because you see you have so many songs and it's year after year where you hear these soccer artists making, you know, the use of alcohol. they making it, you know, as if it's something that should be, that is okay. You hear, don't need to, um, the bottle of rum from Marshall. You hear all these songs every year, year true. after year. Yeah, and it's they true, very true. Perform. Because they're kind of advocated, especially to the young listeners who are like more sensitive to, to do what they say. Yeah. Excuse me, Cole. How old are you? I am eighteen. Right. How do you How do you feel? You know, you, 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 I like what you. I like the way you, 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 the uh, the direction you took because we spoke about that here many times about the soca songs promoting alcohol. What advice would you give to these artists? Well, I think they have to be conscious. They have to be conscious of the audience that their 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 songs are directed towards. Obviously, soca artists are not going to be making songs for people under the age of eighteen. Right. They're catering for for a demographic that is, you know, generally of an age that they should that be does. that they are allowed to consume alcohol. So I don't think much can be done in terms of limiting um, what they put in their songs. But I think they need to be more self-aware when the the types of uh, words they put into their songs and be aware that there are young people listening and there are role models in society so you are going to have people under the age of 18 who are listening to these songs and then they are desensitized to the idea of consuming alcohol mm. thank you so much my brother thank you very thank much thank you very thank you. much 
and join us again next week for another edition of this program we would love to hear from you again good evening yeah god good evening to you man natasha and the other good young ladies evening. here too good evening yeah um the thing is about the, um, the music i would look at it differently is that let them sing what they want but make people at least encourage people to be aware not to take them on you see, and um, the thing is, we, I always have a problem, I mean, a long time, since I went to school hmm, so many years ago, right? No matter that I am 64 almost, yes, right? And that the education system I see has a lot, so many problems with it in the sense that it has become so, you know, stereotyped, it is regurgitation, it is not, it, it stifles curiosity and things like that, so, yes? and it makes children re resistant to learning, eh? You see? Yeah. And, and what happens now, the snowball effect will come there because if they don't want to learn in school, what will they do otherwise? They have to look for an avenue, eh? All right, partner. Thank yeah, you very okay, much. Man, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Six two two four nine one one. Any other young folk out there want to contribute? Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Good um, evening. I'm a friend of Shinanaya. Oh, and that's I've right. um, spoken to Paige a couple times. And I'd like to bring up the point that you don't trust a kid or a young adult enough for them to make a decision about whether they can consume alcohol or not, and blaming the parents. Yet, you are asking them to choose their future career path in school at the age of 16, yeah. in Form 4, mm -hmm. when they're choosing their subjects, yep. which is completely hypocritical. So you can't have a double standard. If True they're going to be consuming alcohol, it is their responsibility. If by that time in their life, they can choose their career path, they are to be held responsible for consuming alcohol and the things that ensue. If you don't want to have that happening and you want to hold the parents accountable, you cannot be having the children choosing their future career path at such a young, tender age. Secondly, Paige brought up a point earlier about being flabbergasted when a toddler used profanity. Profanity in our day and age has lost a lot of its thing. And I would like to ask you, what would hurt more? If someone said, F you, or if someone said, I hate you, and I wish you were dead. You let your toddler say that kind of stuff, I hate you, I wish you were dead, and you don't say anything. But if they say the F word, or the S word, or anything like that, it causes a big commotion. But words only have the amount of power that you give to it. Good and talk, society right. today has taken Good away job. the power of most of our profane, of profane words. Yet, some very simple words like love, hate, death, can cause such stings today. So I think we need to readjust our focuses on what we see as profane and not. Thank you. Agreed. Thank, Thank you very much. That's deep. You went deep points. there, you know. Yeah. You're allowing very children good. to choose the career path, but if they choose to drink alcohol, they have a problem. Because I, uh, because there's there's a da there's a legitimate danger or harm yes, of course, to the individual yes. if you drink. So that's good evening. the difference there. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Good Hi, evening. Good evening. This is um EK. Hi EK. Hi, EK. How you doing? <laughs> well, I'd like to go back to the point about um the um pants and like. <laughs> you can't talk about the tight pants? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, the tight pants might be changed in the pants. So, like, I have did that. I did that once. So, like, um. Yeah. Why you can't? I went, I went to, like, a, a story. I went to, um, a function, right? Right. And, um, my mom gave me this baggy, baggy pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to wear it. So, when I reach, you know, my topic is peer pressure. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. When I reach. Everybody's telling me, good, where you get them pants from, boy? Like, <laughs> I jump off a plane with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's what they say, that's what they say. That's why I remember getting a lot of talk. You have to change the pants. Wow. You have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you have got diet in the back here. You can't. You can't. You're being real, you're being real. You can't. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah, what did I tell you? Tell you? <laughs> <laughs> what what they tell you about the pants? Yeah. If you want, what what they tell you gonna do with the pants? Like if I if I went and jump off a plane, if I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so you. Oh. 
<laughs> so so you felt you I mean you felt that that was to alter your your pants was the was the fair thing for you to do to in order to be have some modicum of respect in, in yeah, your school. It, yeah, to be a part and I think it's more like more prominent when like I'm going to girls and boys school. Uh-huh. And like you want to impress the girls. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the pressure is more when you're going to a, a mixed school. The pressure is more on the boys yeah, too. I think so because I was talking to my friend and he was saying how he doesn't really care about his pants because all he have is boys in his school. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but you see, I think it's about where these schools are located too. Yeah. Because right, all them town schools, I can let you all know that every single guy because I have friends going to a number of schools and all us, it was a matter of. Unless you China, <laughs> you, unless you, you unless you listen to your parents and you, and you really not study it, girls until the end of your <laughs> education. Yeah. Every man, Jack. Well, not every man, but most the majority. Men, majority. The fellas who are really studying girls, they were had their pants taken in, and and I remember at time one teacher was like, "Ah, where are you going with that pants?" I was like, "I'm going to school, and after school, I'm gonna go down by bishops, and then after that, I'm gonna go home." So one go. one paragraph, shit. All right, Tom. Um, <laughs> Ike. Ike. Yeah. Hey, thanks very much for that laugh, thanks brother. For Thank calling. you so much. Thanks for calling. And you'll be on next week. Please go see you'll talk more about prayer pressure, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Thank take you. care, man. Okay. I Bye. love that if you're going and jump off a plane. <laughs> 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 Hello, good evening. Parachute pants. Hi, good night. Good, um, good um, evening. Um, Hi, evening. I'm Chase Bears, and I would like to speak about my experience in Queen's Royal College. Okay. I'm okay. years old, and I still attend school. And yes, when I entered the school, Jersey had a problem with fights. <laughs> I was in Form 1 and I was shell shocked because I came from Central. <laughs> 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 I used to be bullied every day. Every day, everybody would just harass me because I was pudgy and awkward. Right. And mm-hmm. there was a point I started fighting. And yeah. We would fight and we'd get in trouble. But the difference with our school, instead of chastising us, I remember my dean one day telling me, is this how you're going to deal with your problems as a big mm-hmm. man? Yep. Yeah. If your boss chats for your hard work, is this how you're going to deal with your problems? Mm-hmm. And I think this is what they need to put into all the schools as a measure. Instead of scandalizing yeah. and yeah. putting it on the news and making fun of these girls and saying what's wrong with them, we should try to fix them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Measures, eh? yeah. Good point, man. Most Thank definitely. you very much. Thanks for calling. And all the best yeah. for your school, Trevor, man. Take care, right? Thank you. Okay, you're yeah. welcome. Bye bye. Six two two four nine one one. Good. Uh, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Um, good evening. Yes, again. Curious, you guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, my what I was calling to see was about the corporal punishment. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. I heard what it was that you always seeing about corporal punishment being good in certain cases and it's having an effect on well, your generation to see. But a question is that. In certain cases, where it is that you can see that, and it's been proven before by science and, well, surveys and data in general, that violence in some cases we breed violence. And right. yeah. Yeah. with some teachers and with some parents, what it is that they do, whereas they will overdo the corporal punishment. And so my parents, they had corporal punishment in their homes and they turned out fine. But then there are other people who they had cover punishment in their homes and they're in certain situations which are not of the best type. And it can be related back to each other. And so you must remember that everything has to be taken in moderation and not like just say put back cover punishment. But if it is that you're going to do something like that, you put it back in, but you have it in moderation and you have it monitored and something like that. Because you must remember that everybody reacts in different ways and some people like to overdo things as humans because we are perfect. That's I all know. I want. Okay, yes. but thank, thank you, very, you very much. Good point. And yes. just to so add to that point, um, my perspective on that is very simple. If we con- if we do not condone violence against women, then we cannot condone violence by adults yeah. meted against children. Correct. Agreed. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, three panel here. Good Hi, evening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to challenge the young people there in the studio to do some research on uh, subliminal activity. Uh, the subliminal messages that in the music that you are talking about, the soca music, especially the sex part and the raunchy, break out with the um, mm-hmm. mashup the place kind of thing. Now. Right. 
do some research on that is very, very serious. Studies have shown that even adults mm -hmm. that be seriously affected by subliminal activity. Okay. So when you have the same thing over and over and the message, it pounding in your head over and over. Yeah, and it's yep. very dangerous for young children, especially the, age, the young teenagers. It's very, very dangerous for them. The, the type of message that is being sent to them. If you all can do some research and see the extent to which this thing is, is, is so powerful. I hear thank that. You. Um, thank well, you. thank yes, you very thank much you. for that. We so you all have homework, that. all of you. <laughs> EK, like when we come to the, the topic on the show on music. Yes. EK, you heard that, right? So start doing some research on subliminal messaging. Mm -hmm. It's very real. It very, and very especially real. in advertising. It is. Yes. All right. We just have time for a couple more. So we take it quickly. 6224911. Good evening. Hi, good evening um, to everyone in the studio. Hi, good evening. Good evening to my boy Che, you know, I'm also one of those who go to KRC. Okay. okay. Um, first thing, um, I want to talk about the corporal punishment thing. Yeah. My take on it would be that it varies from individual to individual. So that some people, yes, corporal punishment is effective because I myself did get licks as a child growing up. <laughs> you, know, you do something. <laughs> You do something wrong, <laughs> your mother bring out the scissors stick, you pull out your hand, you get blues, and I bet you after that, you ain't really want to do that again. Right. Because a youth man, that hurt, you ain't want experience that pain again, it works. But what <laughs> parents need to do is be sensitive to how your child responds to the, um, the corporal punishment. Mm -hmm. I might be a child, I get my licks, I cry, and then, okay, I stop doing that. Another child would get their legs, cry, go in a corner, will forever be afraid of a scissor stick for the rest of their life. Correct. Sad for life Agreed. kind of vibes, you know? Correct. So it's and resent that Kieran. person who's administering exactly, the legs. Exactly, exactly. So, so, we, so Kieran, what you're saying too is that sometimes it might be a situation where the parent, the legs that the child getting, not really change them in terms of some of them might be changed by the legs in terms of they say, all right, I'll learn my lesson. And some might just, ah, but hate and thing. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not only that, but it will have the... Also, the point where if you get licks as a child, you get licks, okay, maybe you're a stubborn child, you keep getting licks and you just get desensitized to licks. Yeah, so then yeah, what, what do we do now? How do we discipline the child now? So it shows that there has to be other ways to discipline a child than corporal punishment. Agreed. Yes. Yes. It would not be effective with everybody. Good exactly. point, my friend. Right. Thank Good you point. so much. Thank Thanks you. for calling. Wait, no, I'm not finished. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're <laughs> some place. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Don't be <laughs> But um, I also wanted to go on to the um, the whole alcohol drugs issue, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Go How ahead. I see it is that we live in a society nowadays where this is the kind of lifestyle that is promoted and accepted. Mm -hmm. Where, okay, mm -hmm. yes, bro, bro is the point with the songs, where the songs promoting alcohol, you say, I take a drink thing, whatever, mm -hmm. that's the songs. But you also realize as you walk around, you're walking through town, you're walking through wherever in Trinidad, everybody drinking, every two corners is a bar. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Corner yep. of a man, stand up on a corner, smoking a cigarette, smoking hmm. marijuana, in plain view, yes. where this yeah. is supposed to be an illegal substance, and police passing to and fro and thing, whatever, and you know, nobody really cares. You see that this is the socially accepted norm. So for you to come and say that I, as a young person, should not partake in alcohol. What kind of mixed signals are you sending to me? Because as I walk out the door, if I'm a child who travels to school, the first thing I can say as I walk out the door is a man drinking a stag. Yeah. And then as soon as I return song is a man smoking a cigarette. Hmm. And have you ever have you ever driven a taxi or a maxi with the driver drinking a beer? Drinking a beer, no, but smoking a cigarette, yes. Right. Okay, right. my friend. So how I what you have to do is first things first, right? You realize, I realize as I was growing up, is one thing that I don't see anymore is it have people coming into schools talking about alcohol and drug abuse. Making it aware to the students that these are real social issues and that, well, it's a problem that has to be addressed with. Because, as you see, society right now <laughs> is doing absolutely nothing to stop these problems, but then would like to complain about young people don't know how, don't know how to handle the liquor, or young people, you know, drinking too early and getting wasted and things, whatever. But we are not being uh, made aware of the real problem that these things, you know, threaten. Okay. We're not being uh, made aware of the consequences of these actions. So right. we see yep. it and we reproduce in what we see. So what you're saying that we should have more lectures more on substance abuse in schools? Very much so. I think that's one of the first things you have to approach. One of the first approaches you have to make is that you come, you let the children know, 
this lifestyle is wrong. Of course, it would still kind of be contradictory because when you walk out, you just see and it's happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, but at point. least you're more aware. Give them the information. The, exactly. You're more yeah. aware of the problems that these actions you know, pose okay. to young people. All right, so we could go now? We good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, partner. Thank, Thank you very much. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make that our final caller so that Paige could sort of summarize the conversation that we had before we switch to news, which is very soon. So... Um, you know, talking about law and authority, we raised the point that the youths of Trinidad and Tobago, we have a lack of respect for law. The ones who enforce it being the police officers. And you know why? Because they themselves, they don't have respect for us. They indulge in illegal activities. I mean, they do things that are contradicting their rules in society. And as youths, it's a bit, you know, disheartening to have to say okay i need to respect somebody who doesn't even respect the law and at the end of the day that should not be um we also raised the point that you know school fighting it should not only be blamed on the school children it's something that starts from home and you know it's something that should be prevented from the parents within the house systems and another point the last point that we raised was the fact that you know, we have drug abuse in Trinidad and Tobago. It goes on mm -hmm. with the youth. And at the end of the day, it needs to be stopped. And I mean, a lot of businesses, you need to keep things intact. Thank you very much. We are almost, we are out of time. Thank you very much for to Paige, Shona and Shay for joining us. And you will hear their views. Who is who's on next week? EK is on next EK week Sunday on next and week. we expect full participation again from everyone Thank and also you, you can catch much. this repeat of this program again at 10pm this evening yes. right here on Talk City 91.1 FM. Ladies and gentlemen, it was first one. It was really good. Paige, well, congratulations. Definitely. Well done. Thank you made your debut much. on radio. Che, Shona, thanks for dropping in. Sure, we have news coming up. Right? Okay. See you all next week. Please go. Good have night. a good week. Good, good night. Good night.